decided to paint Lulu's cabinets with milk paint, I thought I would come in and show you the five steps to using milk paint and what we're going to be doing in Lulu. Number one, get your surface ready. So use a little bit of sandy and make sure it's clean and dust free. So this is a tabletop I'm gonna paint part of to show you. And you can see I don't have to be perfect in sanding, but I just wanna rough up the top just to get it a little bit better adherence of the paint. Then I'm gonna use my dust cloth and I'm going to wipe that off. And you could even take a damp washcloth and wipe it. Now we're ready for paint. Usually you wanna brush on one to three coats of milk paint depending on what you're doing. Today we're using this antique white. And when you open the milk paint and mix it, make sure it's stirred really well and you want your milk paint to run it comes a little thick. I always add water. That's the nice thing about milk paint is it can be watered down. I'm gonna go right with the grain and just look at how it layers. It works as a primer. It does not have a strong odor. It's literally made from milk. Okay, so it's literally been six, five to six minutes and it's already dry, so it's ready for the second coat. And that's the nice thing about milk paint. It dries really quickly. Take a look, it's pretty. So we're gonna let that dry. Now we're on the third step, which is where you're going to sand it and distress it. If you don't want a distressed look, you would do a really fine sandpaper um, just to give it a nice smoothing. Uh, and you would then use your lint cloth, cloth again. But I want a little distressed look. This is what we did in the cabinet, so I'm gonna show you. Um, I take my rough sander and I just kind of distress and sand off the areas that I want to show. So there's a little bit of distress from the table being old that you can see. I want to show this seam in the wood. And that's the kind of nice thing about milk paint is it sands so nicely. So you'll see a little bit of the wood here. I did some distressing here where some of the bumps and things show through. And I like that because I like the old look. And here along the seam I did some distressing. So once I'm done and have it distressed to where I want, I make sure and clean off any of that dust. All right, here we are for step four, which is glazing. And I'm gonna give you a little secret about glazing. Baby wipes. I love using baby wipes to glaze. The whole point of glazing is to put a color on and then you're gonna take it off till it gets the look that you want. The biggest mistakes people make when glazing is they use too much or they use too big of a brush or a sponge. And then you always wanna work with small sections at a time. So let me start, here's my glaze. We're using Glaze Effect General Finishes. We're using the color Burnt Umber. And here's my sponge brush. So if you wanna come up close, I'll show you. So I put a little glaze on my sponge, which you can see down here on the paint. I'll start on this section. And I'll do a little bit of glaze in small, and then I take a wet baby wipe and I dilute it a little. But if you can see, it picked up the color of the wood nicely. So there's that section. So I'm gonna do along this section. I want that dark to show up inside. And edges of tables tend to get more wear, so I try to put the glaze where the wear would be most. So once I've got it to the level I want, I'm gonna go with the grain because I want that glaze to look like part of it. So I just use these baby's wipes to blend it in. And then if I wanna have these show over here, do a little bit of glazing. And then use that baby wipe. I'll get another one if it's too saturated. And you can see it picked up come close and take a look over the top you can see it really nicely picked up that wood color and there's a little bit of glaze color over the top gives it that antique look and then you just let it dry this is already dry it's been like three minutes just make sure it's not sticky at all it should feel really dry to the touch then you just do the same thing again you just put on a nice layer of smooth top coat 
Make sure it's not too thick. If it shows white foam, um, like white sections, like drops, that means it needs to be smoothed out. You can see this side's getting shinier. So that's the second coat. I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll do a third and then I'll let you see the difference between the two. We're finished. I did the third top coat on here and let it dry and now I want you to come get a close up look. The top coat isn't super obvious but you'll see this has a little more sheen. I used a semi gloss than this which is a little flatter over here. So this has a protective coat. It looks really nice and we're all done. This was just an example of how to do milk paint. I didn't finish this whole table, but this is what we're doing to the cabinets in Lulu and I can't wait to show you the end result.